said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. John 21. Do not neglect the gift that you have, which has been given you by prophecy. And the council of elders laid their hands on you. Practice these things. Devote yourself to them, so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this. And your ears. First Timothy 4. The charge of the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, ready in season and out of season, encourage, rebuke, exhort, complete patience and teaching. But the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, and turn away from listening to the truth, and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober minded. You are suffering the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Hear what Holy Scripture says concerning the strength and promise God gives to those in the office of the Holy Ministry. Let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. For it is not the one who commends himself who is approved, but the one whom the Lord commends. 2 Corinthians 10. Continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Dear brother in Christ, the Lord grant that you receive and keep these words in your heart, so that you may be strengthened and encouraged in your labors. God gathers his church by and around his holy gospel, and thereby also grants it growth and increase according to his good pleasure. That this may be done, he has established the office of the holy ministry into which you have been called by the church and are now to be ordained and consecrated by prayer and the laying on of hands. In the presence of this congregation and before our Lord God, to whom you must give an account now and at the last day, I now ask you, do you acknowledge that the Lord has called you through his church into the ministry of word and sacrament? I do. Do you believe and confess the canonical books of the Old and New Testaments to be the inspired Word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice? Yes, I believe and confess the canonical scriptures to be the inspired Word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice. Do you believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds, namely the Apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian creeds, as faithful testimonies to the truth of Holy Scriptures? And do you reject all the errors which they condemn? Yes, I believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds because they are in accord with the Word of God. I also reject all the errors they condemn. Do you confess the unaltered Augsburg Confession to be a true exposition of Holy Scripture and a correct exhibition of the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? And do you confess that the apology of the Augsburg Confession, the small and large catechisms of Martin Luther, the small called articles, the treatise on the power and primacy of the Pope, and the formula of Concord, as these are contained in the Book of Concord, 
are also in agreement with this one scriptural faith. Yes, I make these confessions my own because they are in accord with the Word of God. Do you promise that you will perform the duties of your office in accordance with these confessions, and that all your preaching and teaching and your administration of the sacraments will be in conformity with Holy Scripture and with these confessions? Yes, I promise, with the help of God. Will you faithfully instruct both young and old in the chief articles of Christian doctrine? Will you forgive the sins of those who repent? And will you promise never to divulge the sins confessed to you? Will you minister faithfully to the sick and dying? And will you demonstrate to the church a constant and ready ministry centered in the gospel? Will you admonish and encourage the people to a lively confidence in Christ and in holy living? Yes, I will, with the help of God. Finally, will you honor and adorn the office of the holy ministry with a holy life? Will you be diligent in the study of Holy Scripture and the confessions? And will you be constant in prayer for those under your pastoral care? I will, the Lord helping me through the power and grace of His Holy Spirit. Jesus said, As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Matthew, I ordain and consecrate you to the office of the Holy Ministry of the Word and Sacraments in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Jesus pour out on you His Holy Spirit for this office and work, that you may faithfully preach the Gospel and administer the sacraments. Amen. Brother Matthew, as you enter this holy office, you enter, I'm sure, with fear and trepidation, knowing the great and marvelous things that you are asked to do. Hear this promise from your Lord from Isaiah 43. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. You are precious in my eyes, and honored, and I love you. You are precious in my brother in the faith and the ministry. Be a bold witness, as the Apostle Paul shares with young Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1. For this reason, I remind you to fan in the flame the gift of God which is in my hand. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and self-discipline. Blessings to you in Christ. The sooner we're able to learn this promise from Paul, the better able we are to function as a servant of Christ. Paul assures us in Philippians 4, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. 